three what? Conditions for sincerity. Germany wants us to look at this. This is this is a subject that can never get old. This is a subject that is always very important for us, all of us, everyone, young and old. Of course, the minute that you say, I've been Muslim 60 years, it's finished. Finished. Once you're proud, you cannot be sincere, you will never get what sincerity is. I've been Muslim for 60 years, don't you dare tell me what sincerity is. I know everything. So many, they are like that. So sincerity. And what are the conditions of sincerity? Say, for us. Praise and blame. Someone praising you, someone blaming you, is the same to you. Number one. What's number two? <coughs> you remember? Say. Forget about the reward in office. Ha. Number two is. When somebody comes in. Yeah, that is opening up what the sincerity, some of the things about the sincerity, but the um, conditions of the sincerity that we mentioned in the khutbah by that uh, friend of Allah, Zunul Misr. Number one, you can only be sincere. When if someone praises you, or someone insults you, it remains the same to you. You don't get too much happy, you don't get too much upset. You don't take it for serious. And what's number two? Say. No. Number two is what? When you do something good, you forget about it as you are doing it. Correct? When you're doing something good, while you are doing something good, you forget that you are doing something good. You're just doing it. And what's number three? What you said before? We are not doing it for the reward of the hereafter either. What it means over there is the praise and the blame. When someone praises you because you deserve to be praised, you're doing something good and you deserve to be praised. Your heart doesn't shake because of that. You do something good and someone blames you. Your heart doesn't shake. These days, people are doing bad things. They're doing wrong things. And they are given signs, they're given reminders, they get upset with them. They get very upset. It is not to say just with the tongue, oh, uh, I don't want anyone to praise me. So many are saying like that. Uh, so many are saying it with their tongue. No, I don't want anyone to praise me. I don't want anyone to praise me. I just want to do my job. So, 
But in reality, you don't want anyone to praise you, but if someone corrects you, corrects you meaning to put you into the correct way, a little bit, you get very upset. You say you don't want praise, but if someone corrects you a little bit, or maybe corrects you more, or maybe corrects you very much, you get very upset. So many they are there. They're stuck there. They cannot come out from that. Maybe they don't look for praise, but they cannot take any criticism. Criticism here, correcting here. Shri Effendi has said so many times, you know you're doing something wrong. Someone corrects you, you should go to that person and kiss his hand. And so many, when they're doing something good, they praise themselves. They praise themselves. It doesn't matter now what form of that praising is. Some openly praising, some hiddenly praising, some hiding using different words. I've been to so many places. When a person is speaking, we are speaking something, then we say, oh, you have a question? Yes. He introduces himself. First thing he does is to praise himself. First thing, I am Mr. So-and-so, I am one of the first one to build this masjid. MashaAllah, uh, by the grace of Allah, uh, so many people take shahadat, I help so many families, I did this, I did this, I did this, praising, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah really means all praise to Allah, but you already took all the praise to yourself, what are you leaving for Allah? No? understand so many they are like they're not even aware because it's become like common uh, way of introducing themselves who are you I'm this one who are you I'm this one I did this and who are you I did this and I did this wrong for believers it is wrong the minute you start praising yourself the minute you start bragging about yourself, you have already burned all your good deeds anyway. Shaitan has already taken it because you have now proudness. Person can deny as much as he wants. No, 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 I'm not proud. I said Alhamdulillah, didn't I? Before anything, I said Alhamdulillah. It's Allah that's doing it, not me. Then why you don't let Allah to speak to us about what good you have done? Why you have to speak and tell us what you have done? And so many, when they are doing something good, not only they are praising themselves, they expect praise from others. And they want everyone to know. And they expect a reward. They expect a reward. What is the reason of our creation? Is there anything there, the reason of our creation, the real reason of our creation, that speaks about a reward? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and we have created the jinns and the inns, the humans and the jinns, to only to know us and to worship us. There is nothing there. But it says the reward. The reason is to know Allah and to worship Allah. You cannot worship Allah if you don't know Him. And there is no worship in the hereafter, there is forever. There is only knowledge to know, to know. What happens when you know someone? You become close. You become close to that person. When you become close to that person, you know that person, you will have knowledge. 
and the knowledge of Allah you think is finished after we die? It continues. We are going to be with the ones that we love. So what do you love? Gold? They're going to give you palaces of gold. So many worshipping for gold. So many making zikr for power. You want all of that, you will get. But you're going to miss the point. You're going to miss the point. What is the point? What is the goal? What is the maqsud? Is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ikhlas. To be a servant. A servant does not expect any reward. Except to please his master. The pleasure of his master. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, I'm pleased with you. Which is why the Sultan al Arifin, I believe, Hazrat Abu Yazid al Bistami, Radas al Asir, is saying, When my Lord addresses me, In the judgment day, saying, O oh my servant, he says, because my Lord is addressing me, I will be so filled with love that with that love I can put out all the fires of hell. I can stretch myself and I can cover all the fires of hell to not let one single person to enter into the hell. Because my Lord is addressing me just with that one word. Hmm. What we're reciting? Surah Yasin. Every morning. What is that ayat? That when it is recited, we make a dua. Salamun qawlam min Rabbi Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salamun qawla min rabbi rahim. Allah giving the salams to the hearts at rest. We are aiming for that. They are pleased with their Lord and their Lord is pleased with them. It's not they are pleased with their Lord because their Lord is rewarding them. They are pleased with their Lord and their Lord is pleased with them. How are you going to understand this? How is anyone going to understand this without a master, without a sheikh? Impossible. Impossible. But everyone has an idea of what this is with a love, with real love. To serve, because that is what love is, is to serve. Is to please that one. Nobody understands it now. Because the love has become only a selfish love. Love has become obsession. Love has become worship of me. That is what a love is. So, inshallah Rahman, we must look to see where we fit into that category of sincerity. It is very high, definitely. But the aim is not to be perfect. The aim is to reach to that, because that is already a perfection. And there are people who have reached that. And there are times in our lives, maybe we have felt that, we have reached that. We must make that to become more real for us, not to let the uh, shaitan and our ego to play games with us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. Can anyone object to what he says? Can anyone say no? If he says, all these deeds that you have done for me is cancelled and I put you to hell, can anyone have any power to say no and I will not? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants can he forgive that one who has done nothing in his life that is good, maybe, 
to bring him out, no one can object. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our aim is just to please him. Our aim is to please him. To love what he loves and to leave what he leaves. To dislike, to hate what he hates. This is important. Don't think you have more mercy than Allah. So many I'm seeing. Oh, Sufism is love. We don't judge. Islam is love and peace. We don't judge. That's correct. Islam is love and peace. And you don't judge. Allah has judged. Allah has judged. For 1400 years, it is clear. What you do, the judgment is already there. No one can say, I'm confused. You do something good, the judgment. It is good. If you don't see it here, you're going to see it hereafter. You do something bad, the judgment is bad. If you don't see it here, you're going to see it hereafter. So many saying, it's so filled with love and peace and I don't judge. Let me now embrace the truth, Huck. And let me now also embrace the battle. Every wrong thing too, because I don't judge, I love every wrong thing. Love what Allah loves and leave what He leaves. This is a very severe test, especially for believers in this 21st century. It's a very heavy test. And we must be able to have an understanding and the intelligence not to have an ounce of love for those that Allah does not love. Don't think you have more mercy than Allah. I went somewhere, someone saying, oh, God is love. God's method is love. Hmm. Allah is not love. Allah is the creator of love. Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you think, he is beyond that. Whatever that you may think, you may praise, you, he is beyond that. <coughs> he is the creator of mercy, he is the creator of love. And so many times in this 21st century, Muslims, they get into so much trouble because they don't know what Allah loves and they don't know what Allah dislikes. And because they are so confused, they start putting everything together Confusion starts, their iman starts to get eaten away, little by little. May Allah keep us always in sincerity, inshallah. Our aim is to please Him, our aim is to please the Holy Prophet, and our Shaykh. Fadiha. Assalamu alaikum. Any questions, say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If the Bible and Quran are from Allah, why do, we they dis why, why do they disagree with each other? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There are four major books that is revealed. And these four major books and a hundred what they call suhuf, leaves, pages, that is given to different prophets. Adam alayhi salam given some, Shis alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, so many other prophets, they're given some. But they're not given a book, a kitab. There are only four kitabs that are given. What are the four kitabs? Taurat, Zabur, Injil and Furqan. The Tawrat of Musa alayhi salam. That is the Tawrat of Musa alayhi salam. The Zabur of Daud alayhi salam. The Injil, the Bible of Isa alayhi salam. And the Holy Quran. Revealed to the Holy Prophet First, we have to be clear 
that these four books, 104, 100 pages, and four major books, they're coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to these different prophets. Except for the Holy Quran, all the other books, they have been corrupted. The Suhufs, they have been corrupted. The Taurat, the Zabur, and the Injil, they have been corrupted. And I'm saying this not because I dislike or I hate them. Their own scholars of the Taurat and the scholars of the Injil and the Zabur including, they will be the first ones to tell you that there has been missing pieces, there have been changes, there have been so much impurities added that they don't know. They cannot even ascribe. For example, the Bible of today is not the Bible that was revealed to Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, 2,000 years ago. It's not. When Isa alayhi salam passed, he had given the, the teachings to so many of his followers. And because of so much political reasons, first they persecuted the Christians, then they became powerful and it became part of the Roman Empire. And now the Christians, then they start to eat each other like they still do. Muslims are eating each other too. Jews are eating each other too. Because they are doing that, the Emperor Constantine became a Christian. His family also, although his wife and his mother, I believe, they were strictly Unitarians. They didn't believe in Trinity. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they say, no. Ahad, oneness of Allah, and Isa alayhi salam, he is a prophet. And when religion became a very powerful tool in that empire, and it's very bad for an empire to have people in the empire, communities in the empire, strong ones in the empire, fighting with each other. So he says, you must put a stop to that. So he collected all the scholars and he collected all the Bibles, issuing a decree, an imperial decree, take all the Bibles. And out of the hundreds of Bibles, four were chosen and the rest were destroyed. And now they're starting to come up. Oh, new gospel. Every year there's a new gospel. Oh, the gospel of Jesus. <laughs> Before this, see, gospel of James, gospel of this, gospel of that. So many hidden gospels coming out. Then we're saying, oh, there's so many different gospels. Where is the gospel of Jesus? For example, the gospel of Barnabas it was destroyed. They thought they destroyed everything, but one copy existed when that saint Barnabas who was a companion of the Holy Prophet of the Isa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam even says in the Bible wherever you meet him accept him, welcome him he was the closest companion and he was buried with that gospel he wrote everything on his chest later they discovered his tomb it's a long story his body was still intact the Bible was there it's taken out it's spread everywhere and that Bible is predicting so many things and is saying what Isa alayhi salam's reality is, that he's a prophet and that he's there warning his people and telling them to welcome and to prepare for the coming of Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam, for the last prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So, now the Bible now, what we have today. It has been so corrupted, its originality is pure, 
And Allah then allows people. You want something, we give you. You want the truth, we give you. Now preserve it. If you don't preserve it, you're going to be responsible for your actions. They took the truth and they corrupted it. And when that is corrupted now, a new revelation comes to correct the previous one that becomes corrupted. It continued until the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago and not one single letter of the Quran has been corrupted. Not one single letter, not one single word, not one single sentence has been changed. Not a single dot has been changed. Don't listen to all these shaitans that says, no, no, there is a different kinds of Qurans, there is a Sana'a Codex, this, this, that. It's all nonsense. It's just putting a lot of mm, confusion. Because if they take all the physical Qurans also and they burn them and they destroy them, the Quran is the only holy book ever in the world that is preserved by heart, that is memorized by heart. Bring me one Christian that memorized the whole gospel. Give me one Jew that memorized the whole Taurat or the Zabur. Give me one Hindu that memorized the whole uh, Vedas, all these things. Okay. They cannot, because Allah says we will preserve it. That's why people who memorize the Quran, they're called Hafiz. And Hafiz is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? Oh, so why people get upset when we say Prophet wasalam, is Rauf, he is Rahim. And they get very upset. They say, Rahim and Rauf is only from Allah. Although Allah says in the Holy Quran, you are Rauf and Rahim. So why are you not getting upset when people who memorize the Quran, why are you taking the names of Allah, putting it on yourself, calling yourself Hafiz? Only Allah is Hafiz. So those are brainless people. So now, the Quran is preserved. Now, the Bible... It has not been preserved. Go and do your own research on this. I don't want to open it up too much. This is not to get you upset or this or that. Do your own research. Say what your own Christian scholars are saying. All the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, Luke, eh? who else? John? So many. They say it's attributed, possibility. There is no 100%. So, but you look, even with today's Bible, that has been changed so much, and continuously is changing. You know why I'm saying continuously? I bore witness to this. Sheriff Andy made me to witness this. I went to one person, very holy woman, so she's saying that she is. She has an ayat from the Bible in her house, written by monks. It's kind of like us putting calligraphy. Yeah? Calligraphy and ayat from the Bible. And that ayat from the Bible, of course, is written in the English translation, not in the original, original what? Original Greek. Oh, Jesus spoke Greek? No. Original Hebrew, original Aramaic, which they don't learn. That's why they can change so many things. In that original language, the ayat is saying something like, and he will come forward and be a righteous person, and he will show righteousness to others, for example. It's clear, he. But I'm looking at the ayat, that sentence, and it says, and she will walk forward with righteousness, and she will... I just looked at it, I didn't say nothing, and this lady said, oh yeah, that is, some monks wrote it for me, it's very beautiful. I said, it's very beautiful. And she said, it's from the Bible, but he changed the he to she, you know, so that it fits me better. For Muslim ears, this is very, um, how you say, abominable <laughs> <laughs> to change the words of Allah. But to others, they say, what's the big deal? He, she, same. If Allah wanted to say she, he would have said she. Maybe he is included in everything. 
when we say mankind, we include women also, right? What you want us to do? Man, woman, kind? Yeah, that's why we have so many man, woman, kind and woman, mankind these days. Don't like history, they see her story. Not his story, her story. Allah, Allah. So now I see it, they change it. Of course, they are starting to do that to the Quran too these days. Not the original Arabic, but so many people now reading just translation. And every year there's so many, just like the Bible, just like the Holy Prophet said, in the Ahir Zaman, my nation will walk the way, will follow step by step the way of the Jews and the Christians. Not the good things, the things that are not so good. They start changing their text, Muslims start changing their Qurans too. Even in the Arabic, they start changing it. There are versions of the Quran in the UAE, in Kuwait, that area, in Arabic that they took out ayats. It doesn't fit to their agenda. Whoever did that, it is their agenda. They took out that ayats that doesn't fit to their agenda. Arabic, they did it. In English, they did it. If you see, for example, the translation of... Uh, what is the name of that translator? Muhammad Ali? Yeah. You guys don't know? The big one. Abdullah Ali. Yeah. That one. Uh, he was the first major one after Marmaduke Pictal. He was the English man who translated it. The 20s he became a Muslim, translated it. Then <coughs> Abdullah Muhammad Ali or something like that his name is. He translated it some years later. You look at his translation, and his translation up to today is still the most famous translation. You pick something up that was published 30 years ago to something that is published today, they're completely different. He even changed, they changed his translation. Especially ayats that has to do with zikr. Allah is saying zikr. They put Quran. Some they don't like, they don't like Prophet they say we only believe in Allah. They believe there is code 19, Quran is uh, protected by code 19 that they take from wrong teachings, not in Islam. Then they figure out everything is 19, you know, this is 19, this is 19, this is 19, everything is 19. Oh, they did their calculation again, there is something wrong, there is a glitch somewhere. Oh, this ayat doesn't fit. So they have to find a reason why this ayat doesn't fit. And they say, you know what? Somebody put that ayat in. We have to take it out. Then it fits. Then they find another ayat. <laughs> Just like that one who looked into the book of the Torah and he saw the name of the Prophet ﷺ mentioned openly or hiddenly and he starts cancelling it. The next day, he opened the page again and he saw not one time, Allah has put the Prophet's name there five times. He starts cancelling. The next day, he sees so many because, of course, <laughs> Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You understand? <laughs> so, they start to change now. Remembrance of Allah, they don't like things that has to do with the Prophet especially they don't like those foolish code 19 people that so many very important, very intelligent people in Muslim countries from heads of state. They start taking out certain ayat saying this doesn't fit, somebody put it in. Another foolish one started to bring this hadith and that hadith saying oh they forgot this and don't listen to all that nonsense. There is Malayani, it doesn't concern you. And those quote 19 people, they say we believe in Quran alone, we don't believe in Hadith, because Hadith is the words of man, it was recorded hundreds of years after Prophet passed, da da da. Their whole 
idea is that religion can only exist between pieces of paper. This is religion, pieces of paper. If the pieces of paper is not there, there's no religion. Religion, if it's not on a piece of paper, there is no religion, there is no faith, there is no spirituality. But they forget, the Quran did not come dropping down as a book. It came to the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. The Injil is Sharif too. It is not. So, one other ayat that they took out. They found again, it doesn't fit again. There's 19. They took out another ayat. And you know what are those two ayats? Ayat especially, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising to that holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. One is the ayat of Amana Rasul. They say it doesn't fit into our scheme. We have to take it out. And that is the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam during the Miraj without the intermediary of Jibrail alayhi salam directly from Allah to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and that is a very important, a very special, very holy, very powerful ayat of Amana Rasul that in our way we are reciting it at least three times a day. You say it doesn't fit. Take it out. And the other ayat is what? That ayat that we just mentioned. Allah giving the Prophet titles of Rauf and Rahim. That ayat of Lakat Jaakum. What is that ayat? Recite. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah. It is praising the Holy Prophet. And they don't like that. They take out two ayats concerning the Prophet. So corruption has also entered into. Islam practiced by Muslims of today not the Islam the real one the faith that Muslims are calling Islam today it has corrupted the book but it is still uncorrupted in the hearts of man and up till today there are tens of thousands of Hafiz of the Quran because still, if all the books, all the Qurans, all the Mus'habs, they are destroyed, it's still able to produce another Quran. Because the Hafiz, Allah has made the Quran with 6,666 ayats to be easily memorized from 7 years old to 70 years old. 7 years old, they start memorizing the whole Quran. Hmm? The same way, the same, um, even the same accent, yeah. the same accent that the Holy Prophet was reciting, because Arabic, there's seven major ways of recitation and 14 minor ways. They take that way that the Prophet ﷺ was pronouncing things and they're sticking with it, not different. You know, for example, uh, we, for example, I'm saying, I don't know too much. The Syrian says, Masjid. And the Egyptians say masjid, you know, they say masjid, but you have to pronounce it as masjid, the way that the Prophet is saying, not to pronounce masjid, although in your local tongue you can pronounce it like that. <coughs> and so, the Quran has remained pure. But even when you look at the teachings of the Bible today, the real teachings of the Bible today, as it is in that book and the teachings of the Quran, you will not see them fighting each other in opposition. It is impossible. The Bible is made up of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hmm? But you're missing on one part. You're missing the last testament. The Sheikh Effendi has always said, Sheikh Mawlana is saying, you're accepting the Old Testament and the New Testament, but you're not accepting the last testament, which is the Quran Kirim. But the teachings of the Bible, in essence, if they say, what is the teaching of the Bible? If I ask so many Christians, what is the real teaching of the Bible, the most important law? What is the, if you can reduce all the Bible into one sentence, so many, one verse, so many may not be able to answer. But Sheriff Andy has trained us properly since we were kids to understand certain things. 
to read certain things is what? What is that teaching? If I'm not wrong, if I'm not misinformed, it's love thy neighbor as you would thyself. Isn't it? How is that in opposition to what the Quran is teaching? Especially on those ones who want to be walking Qurans. As the Holy Prophet lay said to a salam, he was a walking Quran. So those who are in tariqats, those who are following shaykhs, and they're carrying shariat and they're carrying the tariqat, they also want to be the walking Qurans. Hmm. And those ones, because they are the walking Qurans, and the last testament completes the Old Testament and the New Testament, it completes it. This is why you see always where the Tasawuf people are, the Dervishes are, the Sufis are, always you're going to see people from other faiths flocking to them, coming and sitting down, listening to what they say, and they say, Haq. They say it is true. They say we accept. You're not going to find too much the other way around. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This much is enough. You can speak like this for weeks. But this is enough, inshallah, for you to understand. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why are there divisions in Islam such as Sunni, Shia and Salafi? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.